So in the last video, we left off being able to query the database. We set up our API, we queried the database, and we returned some JSON. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the various endpoints for our API. Specifically, we wanna have at least two endpoints, which are just essentially like pages on a website. We wanna be able to go to slash users to get a list of users. We wanna be able to go to slash session or slash auth to log the user in. So when we send a post request to auth, we want to send the user's credentials that they want to log in with. And then our API will return the login token as we did in the social network series. And that's what we're going to use our API for. We're going to use it to log users in. So we're going to create the auth endpoint first. So if I print our the get variable and I refresh, you can see it says URL equals users. And if I go to the hasty access file, you can see that whatever page we go to is getting sent to index.php in the parameter URL. What we want to do is we want to say if get URL equals, and in this case, we'll say auth. And then in here, we'll put the code for our endpoint called auth when it receives a get request. We'll have to do another one in post when we get a post request and things like that. And then we could also say else if, and paste this in again, if the URL parameter equals users. So now if we go to slash users, we'll get we'll run this code. If we go to slash auth, we'll run this code. Specifically to authenticate users, we're going to use a post request because we're going to send their data to the server in the post request. So we're going to copy this first line of auth. We're going to paste it in post. So we have our auth page here. When we get a post request to the auth endpoint, we're going to run this code. And when the user authenticates, they send us their username and their password. To get the body of the post request, we need to do something special. We need to access what's called standard input. And the simplest way to do this is just to say, post body equals file get contents. And then instead of passing a file name, what we're going to do is pass in php colon forward slash forward slash input. This will allow us to store the post body in this post body variable. And then what we'll do is we'll just echo it out. Now what we'll do is we'll run that. So in part, what will happen if I run this as our post request gets sent, if we go to raw, you can see we just have headers. These are the headers. We have nothing below that. The reason for that is because we need to go to the body tab when we send the request and we want to send some text. Just like that, we type in anything, we have it set to post, we run that, there's the data we sent in the post body. So we want to send some JSON, so we're just going to click on JSON here, and we're going to add an item. The item we're going to add is going to be called username, and the value is going to be whatever the username we want to send is, in this case I'll just leave it blank. The next one we want to add is the password, and the password is just whatever password we want to send, and we're going to send them both in the post body. Now if I run that, you can see we get username, it's an empty string, and we get password, and it's an empty string. So now what we'll do is we will say post body equals json decode post body and now post body will be an array so if we print that out you can see we have our standard array object with a field called username and a field called password and they both have no values so what we're going to do now is authenticate the user so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to go to the login page from the social network series. We're going to open that up and you can see here's all of the code to log the user in. So the first thing we have to do is check the username if it's valid and the password if it's valid. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply say if db query and then here what we'll do is just copy that query we have here, select username from users, copy that. And now we can see that the username is valid. Then if the username is valid, we're going to check if the password's valid. So to do that, we're going to go to login and we're going to copy this again. And we just need to change db query to db, just like that. So now if we get to this stage, we know that the username and the password are both valid. So we're going to echo valid. And before we can run that, we need to just say username equals post body username. And we'll copy and paste that and change that to password equals post body password. Now we have the username and the password. Now if we run this with a blank username and a blank password, we get nothing printed out. But if I put in something like verified, which is a valid username and then a valid password, which is going to be test pass, and I run that, you can see we get valid printed out. So instead of printing out valid, what we want to do is generate the token and send it back to the user. So if we go to the login page, you can see what we do is we generate our token here and we store it in our tokens table. And the only difference we do is we set the cookie with the token in it and we set the other cookie. We're not sending cookies at the minute, we're just sending the response back from our API. So if we go to index.php and we just paste this in and we change db query to db query and then we change it again up here. Then what we can do when we get to this point is we can echo out JSON, we can say echo and here we can say token 
and then we can just pass in our token, which in this case is just the word token. And since we're using single quotes, we just want to put in a single quote and then a dot, and that allows us to put a variable in there. So if the user is valid, we send them back this JSON. Otherwise, we're going to send back a response code, which is going to be HTTP response code. And we'll send back something like 401, which means unauthorized. And now if we run PAW again, you can see we get our token printed out. This is our login token. And then if the password is incorrect, we'll put in another S. We run this. So that didn't actually give us the error. That's because this else clause only applies to it to check on the username. So what we'll do is just copy that, paste it up here. So now if the username is incorrect or the password doesn't match, we're going to send back a 401 response code. Now if we run that, you can see we get 401 unauthorized. We send back a valid password and username. We get 200 OK. We get the token returned to us. We might want to send more data as well, but for the minute, we're just going to leave it as token. We can add more data later on if we feel that's necessary. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Don't forget you can email me at francis at if you have any questions. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.